Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here. I was just gonna make another update, uh, updated video to their Round Hill funds, uh, which you know talks about what their latest distribution is, so on and so forth. But I figured why not actually just make an updated video to the Retire on Round Hill, um, you know, to my last one because I I did create a Retire on Round Hill video way back, maybe a month or two months back or so, or even more. So since we have more data, I figured it's only fair to make an updated video on that. So first I'll cover um, real quick, what the heck is Round Hill, right? Round Hill is yet another high yield ETF fund, a uh, different company called Round Hill Investments. They offer many different ETFs. So if you go to their website, you can go to our ETFs. They have ETFs called Bets, Sports Gambling ETF, Chat, AI type thing. King's uh, ETF, so on and so forth. So they have so many uh, cool, they have cool tickers, I have to say. They have weed, nerd, you know, I love their tickers. But the high yield funds um, <clears throat> that came out are called XDTE and QDTE. Sorry. So let me uh, let me get out of here. How the hell I get? There, there you go. So XDTE is the one I have up. So this, what does this do? It utilizes a synthetic covered call strategy that seeks to provide current income on a weekly basis while also providing exposure to the price return of the S&P 500. So basically what do they do? They sell covered calls on a daily basis, zero days to expiration. This means they sell calls the morning of and they close them out the night of on the same day. No covered call goes overnight. No covered call go goes over the weekend. It's zero, true zero DTE, meaning, you know, less than 24 hours. So it's not a full day. It's actually, what is it? Eight, not even eight hours, right? What, what's, what's the stock market open? You know, the stock market doesn't even work a full day. So it's not even a full, full day's work. But either way. That's what they do. That's how they generate income. Um, so this is their website. Their expense ratio is 0.95%. Assets under management on XDTE currently at 91 million and growing. QDTE is even bigger. Um, these are their holdings. Uh, right now it just shows the long call. So they do buy calls, which represents the synthetic position. And this is what they sell calls on. Um, they have two different ones. One expires March 21st, 2025. The other expires June 20th. Uh, that expires uh, 2025. Different strike prices as well. And that's pretty much it for the website. Again, I, I have a weird issue on my phone where for some reason the export um, is not working properly for the intraday trades. Let's see if it works now. Download. Usually it pops up if I click that. Or is it still downloading maybe? Okay, there you go, it came up. All right, so for, I don't, why does it come up in Excel? That's actually pretty annoying. Um, so here's, Here's, I guess, one of their trades that they did on a daily basis. So you can see it expires on August 30th. That was the day before yesterday. Um, so they probably, you know, they made it in the morning and it should have expired in the morning. Let's see if I can even edit this. I can't. Yeah, that's the problem. So, all right. So anyway, I don't have Excel on my phone. So let's get rid of that. Let's close this. But yeah, you can download the intraday trades, which I guess it does save the prior day's trade even through the weekend. That's something Yield Max does not do currently. All right, so anyway, let's get to the Excel, the Google Sheets sp spreadsheet. So here is Round Hill. Um, they launched March 7th, 2024. Their launch prices were QDTE was 46, 44, XDTE 52, 46. Then here's their current price. Here's their total distributions to date. And then this shows capital gains, current price plus distribution, and then ITD gains from inception without drip. So obviously, um, very, very solid performance from March. 
which is not that long ago. Um, so they haven't been out long at all, but, you know, less than six months. And XDTE already has a return of 10.87%, which as a weekly payer, as a high yielding payer, this is pretty freaking amazing, to be honest. Um, I was surprised to see the performance of XDTE kind of overshadowing uh, QDTE. So I'm a fan of both. But I would have thought, you know, you know, well, it can go either way, I guess. Uh, typically, the S&P is, I guess, the safer option because they offer, uh, you know, they cover more holdings uh, than the NASDAQ 100. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it on that note. Uh, this is kind of their strategy. <clears throat> they buy a call, long call, uh, which costs money, debit, and they sell a call zero, day to, uh, to zero days to expiration. And that's their credit. So that's how they make money. So how have they done from inception? Well, here's the charts, right? Um, what I do is I put the X dividend date for every single week from inception, and I just show how much they have paid each and every time. The latest of which um, X dividend date was August 29th for QDTE. They paid 31 cents, and that comes to an annualized yield of 38%, which, you know, not bad. Total return, though. Um, 5.93%. Again, this is capital appreciation plus uh, distributions. You know, obviously, if you do drip week by week, it gets better. Same thing for XDTE. This shows all the distributions from inception, latest of which uh, they paid out 26 cents, which is a 26% annualized yield. Total return, 9.69%. So again, really good performance um, week by week. So that being said, now uh, that's the status as far as Roundtail. Now I have this ROR tab. This, it always just sits there. So as mentioned, I made a video way back when. It was basically the first retire on video. It was retire on Roundtail, ROR. And it reflected, you know, something based on their average yield. So now that we have, you know, more weeks in, we're more weeks into this, so we're about almost six months into this, we have a better average yield. In fact, the average yield of my prior video, I believe it stated 24%. So now when I take the average of both tabs, both funds, we come to an average yield on an annualized basis of 31.08%. I have to say, I'm impressed. Um, so QDTE, obviously higher yield of the bunch, but you know they have... Uh, more capital depreciation because uh, their annualized yield, their latest one is 38%, um, and XDTE latest yield is 26%. The highest yield XDTE ever had, let's see, uh, looks like 41%. And then the highest yield for QDTE looks to be 69%. So... Again, some, some weeks are better than other, others, but we'll just take the average because you don't know what to expect. So now it's time for the hypothetical and how much you have to invest. So the best part about these funds is the weekly compounding. This is something no other fund offers. As you know, Defiance offers similar funds. They are one DTE, not zero DTE, but you know similar type of strategy, except they sell puts. <clears throat> but they do pay monthly. They don't pay weekly. When you get paid weekly, you can reinvest that money yourself, right? Um, of course, you know, you know, uh, defines themselves. They're essentially reinvesting the money automatically anyway, and putting it to work. Um, but you yourself, as you get the money, you can reinvest it uh, how you choose. But this chart here is showing that you're reinvesting it on a weekly basis. So let's just say you have $10,000. So I use starting investment, $10,000. I plug that in. No weekly deposit. And capital gains, um, I pull from uh, the other sheet, which pulls from here. Wait, where is it? Right here. So capital gains for QDTE, 8.7% negative. Uh, XDTE is actually positive, 0.27%. So you take the average of the two. It's negative 4.22%. Um, negative capital gains on a weekly basis, negative 0.08%. So that's not that bad. So if you take $10,000, you plug it in, you buy both funds equally, and you just let them drip, what happens? How soon can you retire? 
Let's check it out. Again, this is assuming all things are equal, right? This is assuming we don't have a, a terrible bear market or recession or whatever, or this is assuming the market doesn't do even better than how it's been doing, right? Because that could happen too. It can happen both ways. We always assume negative, but let's think both ways. But this is based on historical data only. So how soon can you retire? Well, let's see. Year one, you'd be bringing in $4,000, right? Obviously, you're not going to retire on that. So let's go five years ahead. Five, year five, you'd have $11,000. Well, that's not, not going to work either. Year 10, you'd be bringing in $45,000. Some people could live off that if they have Social Security. Not, not many, though. Let's continue to year 15. We're talking $172,000. So that you could probably live off of. Again, it depends on the country. And if you live in the United States, obviously... You're looking more towards this number. Of course, it depends on which state as well. It depends on how, you know, how much do you have young kids? Do you have a wife? How, you know, are you like bougie as hell that you need to buy all this crap? Because if so, you may have to wait till year 19 when you're producing $502,000 on an annualized basis. See, the beauty of this is um, the weekly compounding. That's really it. But you want to get to a point when you say retire on these funds, you want to be able to at least reinvest, you know, a portion of it, at least or even half of it, right? If you make five hundred thousand a year, you could live off two fifty and reinvest two fifty, and you'll be sitting pretty. But of course, anything can happen in twenty years, and who the heck knows, you know, what goes on? Obviously, I'm in the spreadsheet, unfortunately, in my other file, so now it's going to say re retire on dividends. Um, which is going to block, which is annoying. Just so you know, guys, to the right, this is really where all the work happens. It shows week by week what your dividend will be, what your capital gains is, and then your ending capital, and then your annualized income. So if you guys um, are curious how this actually works. Now, let's throw in a few more numbers. Let's just say you have a little more money. Let's say you have $50,000. And let's say you're old. Let's say you're what? Maybe you're 45 and you want to retire by 50. If you're five, how much would you have? Well, not enough. Um, you, you'd have 59,000 annualized. So maybe you can retire at 55, year 10, $225,000 annualized. Again, I'm showing, you know, there's a couple columns. Weekly pay is column B, monthly pay column C, but I'm really just looking at annual, which is column D. So... Based on that situation, you're looking at 10 years. If you just threw in 50,000, let it do its thing, boom, I'll take it at year 10 and I'll, I'll retire at that point. But what if you're, let's say you're broke and you're in your 20s? Maybe you can only shell out 1,000 bucks, right? 1,000 bucks. And maybe you can put a weekly deposit because you're obviously working of 250. Oh, wrong field. All right, so a thousand bucks starting investment, two fifty a week. Let's look at in five years when you're twenty five years old, you'll be making forty three thousand dollars a year. That's pretty damn impressive. Year ten, two hundred and seven thousand dollars you'll be making at the age of thirty years old. So, I mean, what if you wait till you're freaking forty or thirty nine? This shows year nineteen. Let's just assume forty. Two point four million dollars annualized income. $205,000 a month, or on a weekly basis, $47,000. Like, this is when the numbers get crazy. Um, when you have more time or when you add in the weekly deposit, right? You know, because this, this fund, I mean, XDTE, now that I'm seeing this, XDTE performing this well, I'm probably going to add it to my, uh, my wife's uh, brokerage account, which is now our bill pay account for our car. Um, this, you know, again, I'm, I updated the numbers. I didn't really look at them, but this is just super impressive. Um, you know, from what I can tell. So Q X D T E solid, solid fund capital positive and a distribute an average. Well, I don't know their average alone, but it's around like 20%, probably more, you know, amazing, amazing stuff. Anyway, let's continue to the retire on round hill file and let's just say all right let's just say you're 60 you got a hundred thousand dollars 
and you're going to you're going to retire at 62 that's 2 years out that'll produce 63,000 a year so i mean again this is not enough to retire but maybe at that point you can pull social security as well or maybe you have even more money to shell out maybe you have $300,000 so if you plug that in at year 2 you'll be making $169,000 a year so again this spreadsheet I can make this available in the Discord if you guys if you guys would like. Let me know in the comments. Um, you can plug in whatever you want. Again, this this spreadsheet um, is mainly for my Round Hill weekly update or monthly updates, sometimes weekly. Um, but um, if you want this spreadsheet, which I can share this spreadsheet, uh, I can add that to the Discord. All right. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, Obviously, Roundhill has been has done pretty well. If you can make a 31% annualized yield with a capital depreciation of 4.22%. Again, one thing to also keep in mind, this could be double. The capital depreciation could be negative 8% because we're only six months in. So that's another factor to consider. Uh, but even so, um, that's still not terrible because um, you're getting paid weekly as well, weekly compounding is a very powerful thing, um, but I don't know. I'm, this is something I got to think about too, and actually, because I could probably, let's just say I put $10,000 to work in my situation. I know I was about to end it, now I'm thinking one more, one more example. If I put 10000 in that account and I just let it ride, it can make 11000 a year. How much a month? Nine, 984 that's pretty damn good. Right away... I can be making a monthly income of $337 because this account I'm referencing, this is an income now account. I'm actually paying myself now. I'm reinvesting some, but I'm paying myself now because I had enough. I'm not waiting any longer. Again, I want to enjoy life now. So um, it's important that you're not, you know, obviously reinvesting everything is amazing. The compounding is awesome, but keep in mind, it's good to take some time, take some money and enjoy life, right? Enjoy Buy something for your kids, buy something for your wife, buy something for your parents. You know, you're going to make all this money. What the hell's the point if you can't spend it? Um, so it's good to, you know, kind of do that. So I did set up um, auto, auto transfer into the checking. And now looking at these numbers with XDTE, obviously the yield will be a little less, but it'll be, you know, somewhat similar um, and pretty damn stable. But let me know what you guys think of retiring on Round Hill. Is it an option? I know these funds are becoming more and more popular. Uh, people are hating on Yield Max and loving Round Hill. I don't see why you can't love both. Both have their own strategies, right? They're not really competitors. This is kind of more so maybe a competitor of Defiance, if at all. But even Defiance, they sell puts. You know, Round Hill sell calls. You can, you can utilize both strategies. It would be cool if Defiance was a weekly payer. Then, then you got something there. Then you can invest in both, get paid weekly, maybe a different day in the week too. I don't know. Maybe that's a thought for the future. I'll have to run that by Sylvia. Anyway, so that's my updated video on the Retire on Round Hill uh, series. Maybe I'll do this again when it hits one year and we can see where the numbers are at. It's important to look at things at least on a one-year basis. Again, we only have six months, so this is all we can use, uh, but still very, very impressive numbers uh, from what I can tell. Let me know what you guys think of this. Um, are you a big fan of Round Hill? Is it still too early? Um, or is the yield not quite high enough for you at this point? As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment, so hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. If not, we will try again next time. Uh, but if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. And again, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think of this. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a great day. Later.